Ladies and gentlemen, our food supply is under absolute, unrelenting, unprecedented attack right now. It is neither hyperbole to suggest this, nor can I sufficiently stress the importance of understanding what's going on right now. Let's talk about it. I'm Christian, and this is the Ice Age Farmer broadcast. And I want to begin with this Christmas Eve announcement of a new study that shows that pigs are susceptible to COVID-19. From Brownfield Ag News, a new study by Iowa State University this week found that pigs can now become infected with the coronavirus after being inoculated, after deliberately infecting them. The disease has been found to infect several animal species and the potential risk for transmission is unknown. We need to study more to understand the impact on livestock. This contradicts previous reports that swine are not susceptible to the virus, although we did use even more virus when we deliberately inoculated them than ever. But now we need to do more research into just how these animals might spread COVID-19. Now, here is the study, and I want to make very clear that we read down here, after deliberately inoculating them, we used this procedure to detect whether or not they had been infected successfully. Sure enough, it is the PCR test being run at 40 cycles. Those of you just tuning in, we really already know that that is complete nonsense. It's a fraudulent test. Fauci himself announced that anything over 35 cycles is a waste of time. You're not going to find anything that gives you any meaningful data, whatever. You can amplify something so much that it's just, you can find anything you want. So this is a completely fraudulent test, just as it's fueling the case-demic that's being used to shut down the entire freaking world. Now we're going to use it to find it in pigs and then kill off our food supply. You know, we've already seen this happen with the mink. And I've talked a lot about this because I could tell they were establishing the narrative to pave the way for doing exactly this. When Denmark killed off 17 million mink because we detected COVID-19 in them using a PCR test that is meaningless. Well, we, we really made it clear that that's just what you need to do when you find COVID in a the animal population. Just like China set the stage when they started locking people down when the very first outbreak started and now the rest of the world had to do the same thing. So too did the mink establish this as the response. It's the, the predictive programming that shows the world, oh, well, if mink get it, we had to kill them all. Millions of them. And now we see it in pigs. Crikey, we're going to have to kill off all of our pigs. There goes pork off the menu. Now, of course, I have been covering this extensively because it's it's clearly an attack on our food supply. And if it were really a ridiculously dangerous virus that was shutting down the entire world and suddenly found a new mutation of it in the mink, then when you killed them off, you would make damn sure that you didn't spread that out across. You would burn them all on site, incinerate those infected mink. Instead, they threw them on flatbed trucks and they were spraying blood across the streets. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was, it's clearly a fraud from start at the PCR test to finish spraying them across the city. No one cares. It's a complete lie. Everything about this is a fraud. And yet, now we see that the story will play out. We will at some point see someone somewhere say, oh, look, here's a pig in a Tennessee barn that tested positive for COVID-19, and we have to kill off all the pigs within 100 miles to keep this from spreading further. Because, after all, it might mutate in these pigs, and then we might get it back into the human population, zoonotic threat, and then our vaccines wouldn't work, and you don't want that, do you? Because then we'd have to lock you back down. So this is clearly an attack on animal agriculture. And we see this. We see this already happening with the bird flu, where Japan just killed off this week 2 million more chickens because of a bird flu detected in their bird population. We've seen the UK killing off chickens and hundreds of thousands of ducks because of the bird flu being detected there. And in fact, the UK has already changed their requirements for poultry farms. Read here from The Independent. Chickens and hens must now be kept indoors. You can't free-range those birds anymore, even though that's the healthiest, happiest, 
for them and healthiest for us to eat free-range birds, good healthy fats. No, no, no. Keep them inside. Push everyone into the dirty, unsafe factory farming models that now they're already positioning themselves to kill off, right? This, this is them killing off the healthy aspects of good animal has husbandry so that then they can just go ahead and shut the door on all animal agriculture. And it is boiling my blood. I try to stay calm, cool, and collected for this broadcast, but you can probably tell this has my knickers in a twist. Um, their meat and eggs can still be labeled free range. So just another example of how they're uh, relaxing the requirements on labeling like the USDA has done in the U.S., since the beginning of the pandemic, you can change ingredients and they don't even tell you. And of course, yes, experts are warning, well, hey, if, if you coop those animals up, it's going to make them even more vulnerable to viruses. I'll leave a link to this below. You can read. Um, all of these are linked below. But uh, this, this is exactly what we're describing. They're now changing the way that you are allowed to grow food in the name of z pandemics and zoonotic threats. And it's really upsetting. And of course, the USDA has already, earlier this year, earmarked a million dollars to study COVID-19 in the beef supply chain. Reading from The Independent. The USDA is funding a $1 million research project to identify how the virus that causes COVID-19 might be, it, it might be transmitted in the nation's beef supply chain from cattle on the farm to the packages in your fridge. It's a two-year project set to begin in October. It's already begun. And while there is no evidence that the virus spreads through food or food packaging, well, hey, it's just taxpayer money. Let's throw a million dollars at it. We should study it anyway, just to make sure that when we amp up the PCR test to 40 cycles, we don't somehow find a false positive that would allow us to shut down your food supply. You can see this is happening across the board right now. This is them paving the way for their meatless future. That's why the CEO of Bill Gates funded Impossible Foods is out there saying it's already game over for the meat industry and they don't even realize it yet. Can you believe how this guy just gets up there and says things like that? Well, it's because he knows this is the plan. He's just, after all, the guy who was put there. He was installed there to create this fake meat because the plan is to get rid of the real thing, to get rid of good, healthy fats and real protein so that you depend on their bug burgers to feed your family. Ladies and gentlemen, this is tremendously disturbing. And you need to take it very seriously. Of course, China has also started finding coronavirus, despite the fact that experts say it shouldn't happen. Well, China is finding it anyway. No doubt, also with a PCR test amped up to meaningless levels, China finds coronavirus on packages of Brazilian beef. They found it on other packages of fish. The World Economic Forum also betrayed their intentions here when they said, yeah, the next COVID super spreader, definitely frozen food. And then they tagged it, bold actions for food, their whole attempt to radically transform the entire food system on earth, even by hook or by crook, they will get you. You know, when I interviewed Gabe Brown, and I said, there's a war on meat, they're going to call it a CO2 emissions, you know, cow farts and all this stuff. Are you worried? He said, bring it on because he knows the science is on his side, that beef is better for you, uh, regeneratively grazing Cattle are actually really good for the environment. All of these things are on our side. But they don't care about that because they're going to lie. They're going to lie as they pull this. They're going to kill off. I mean, it's just astounding. They're not going to play fair because they know they don't have the facts on their side. And just yesterday, indeed, China said, yeah, we, we keep finding COVID-19 on your meat from everywhere in the world. Quote, China meat importers and processors have called on exporters in countries with COVID-19 outbreaks to step up their checks on shipments before they send meat out into the world's biggest importer. Quote, we've been importing a large amount of meat this year and we keep detecting the virus on those packages. So now you're going to need to take the extra step and the extra expense of sterilizing your meat. Or we'll just stop importing, which they've also done earlier in the year. They stopped imports from a few JBS factories in Brazil. Needless to say, this just raises the cost to the producer of the meat, which raises the cost to you, the consumer of the meat, and throws even more wrenches 
into the uh, the entire pipeline for producers. This makes it even harder for ranchers to, to get meat to market. So this is all part of a coordinated attack on the protein supply of the world, and it's working. It's working. It's the year end now, and we can say USDA, November cattle placements are falling 9% onto feedlots. What does that mean? It means there's 9% less cattle going to the feedlots to get fat for next year. Quote, that means tighter market-ready supplies in late spring of 2021. 9% less of a pipeline. Same story for, uh, for, for pigs. Breeding herd has declined by 3% as pork producers faced increased pressure. The breeding inventory in the U.S. dropped 3% from the previous year. What does that mean? It means the sows that have babies that we can then eat are gone now. They're not just culling off the pigs that you were going to eat. They're culling off the pigs that produce the pigs you're going to eat. This is the pipeline itself. The, the, the ability to create meat is being reduced year over year, right in front of your eyes right now. And this is before the soybean shortage really comes to fruition, which I will save for a next video because there's a lot to cover there. This is all part of an orchestrated attack to engineer food shortages specifically. The name of the game is protein. But I will mention for one, this is why all of the multinational feed companies are saying, now is the time to stop buying soybeans from Brazil who is the number one producer of soybeans in the world. We're just going to stop buying those because global warming and deforestation. We read from Bloomberg here, the world's largest food companies and grocers like Walmart and Tesco and Unilever and Nestle, the biggest food company in the world, all in concert suddenly now decided to stop buying Brazilian soybeans from the Cerrado region, which just happens to grow... 60% of Brazil's soybeans, the number one exporter in the world. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. This is a deliberate attack on the soybean supply worldwide. It will result in drastic increases of uh, animal feed, which will, and this is already happening in parts of the world, in Nigeria and Trinidad and Tobago. These are smaller markets, and so they act as canaries in the coal mine of how this will affect the rest of, of you know, how this plays out. And we see poultry farmers are going out of business because they can't afford to feed their animals, or in some cases, they just can't even get feed anymore. So again, I'll stop there. There's too much to cover on the soybean and feed front for this video. We'll leave it here. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to really get serious about growing your own food and about producing protein to keep your family well fed in the days ahead. This is an attack on our food supply that will be used to justify the complete transformation, the great reset the table, the great food transformation, all of these agendas that have been published this year will be uh, justified through the food shortages that are being actively, deliberately, mercilessly engineered right now. Please spread the word about what's going on because it's going to take all of us to create a decentralized, uh, regenerative food system that will be able to feed our families for generations to come and will remove our dependency on the corporate food supply chain. We've got to get away from these things. They're, they're poisonous and they're being destroyed in front of our eyes anyway. So what better time than now than to move back to a regenerative and distributed, decentralized model for food production. In fact, that is the name of the game and the name of the talk that I'll be giving at the Greater Reset Conference, which is uh, coming up. So announcing January 25th through 29th, the Greater Reset put together by the Freedom Cell Network and Derek Bros doing an amazing job pulling together this remarkable cast of characters from Dr. Vandana Shiva to Dr. Mercola to James Corbett, Rosa Corey, Jack Spierko. I am thrilled to be sharing the stage with these awesome people, but uh, we will all be talking about how to, what is the answer to their great reset? Because we don't want their technocratic, transhumanist, disgusting, cockroach milk based future, right? We want a decentralized future where people are 
happy to be there and they're growing things that are healthy and doing things in better ways. So it's totally free. It's available online. Check out thegreaterreset.org. And I'm very much looking forward to that conversation about the future we want to build and we want to leave for our children. I'll see you there. For now, you can find this report and all my reports on iceagefarmer.com. Please get off YouTube if you are still on it. You can check out odyssey.com slash at iceagefarmer for a nice, slick, YouTube-like interface over a free speech-based content platform. So check that out. Um, but always the, the site that I control is iceagefarmer.com. So bookmark that and I will see you there. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing this important news about what's going on with our food supply. And I will look forward to growing food with you in the days ahead. Let's go build great things and grow delicious, abundant, nutritive, regenerative food. Be well.